Welcome back to another episode of Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. This is episode 31, Hangar Patch 12.1 and Freelancer Variants. Well, here we are looking at a beautifully rendered fish tank in PBR. And I'm bringing you here because I want you to see how incredibly beautiful PBR can make things look in game. We all remember that not so gorgeous, but gorgeous in its own right fish tank from before the hangar patch 12.1. Well, almost everything in the hangar at this point looks as good as this does. And that's a big almost, because there are some ships that have not received the, well, the beautification that the fish tank or the Avenger or something like the new 300i trainer has gotten. A lot of the ships are, you know, still awaiting their variants or major updates like the Constellation. So when we walk around the hangar, we're going to do a little bit of, well, a little of a in-depth on the new freelancers and just walk arounds on the old ships to give you an idea of how things have changed. I'm not saying things aren't all perfect, but then again, this is still pre-alpha. We haven't gotten to the alpha, alpha stage. I guess I don't know what to call that. So outside of a few glitches, one of which you're going to see in just a few seconds, yep, here's the inside of my hangar. Wonderful, gorgeous, and with so many ships in it, all I get is about 25 frames a second. But there is the biggest glitch I've had in the hangar so far. My buggy seems to be possessed. <laughs> it seems to be in motion all the time, and it sometimes just rolls over on its side, sometimes violently flies into walls all over the hangar like a like a pinball machine. And in this case it's just slowly drifting off into the 300i trainer. And it clips through things, goes over things, it bounces off things. It's kind of funny and I'm thinking about getting some kind of video together of all the things I've caught my actual buggy doing. It's funny. So let's just get past the 300i, which we've always shown in my one of my last two videos. And let's go walking through. So we are upstairs in the main hangar, and we're looking at the towel over here, and looking at how the towel Actually, has a use button on it to make it dirty. Why you would want to make your towel dirty is beyond me. Over here, we have the PBR version of the outfit um, module, and it just doesn't work. There's the Zeus. Both the case and the Zeus look incredible. You have to admit that. Beautiful. I wish they would just let us have that or be able to go to a museum of old ships in the verse and just be able to walk around it. That would be a good thing to have on Terra or Earth somewhere in New York, Moscow, or London, or one of the other landing zones. All right, so off to our right here is our, hang our hangar's calendar that was given as one of the subscriber benefits. I've got an extra one that I can give away if you guys leave a comment saying that you want it. Um, if you remember, in the old hangar, there was a uh, the video that's over there. And we we'll just step to the right. Come on, let's turn around. Oh, never mind. Here's the Foot Locker. has a whole bunch of stuff in it. Stuff we can't use yet. Some hip and waist and uh, boot gun mount, you know, gun holsters. So we're going to walk back over here a little bit. We're going to look at what, at what I was trying to talk about before. There used to be two displays up there. One always displaying something and the other one not so much. So they've removed one of the displays from the wall. And of course, as we come back to where we started, the fish tank is just looking gorgeous. Here we are back in the main hangar, or at least walking our way there. And we're going to be going down to take a look at some of the ships that I have. The first thing that we're going to do is get on this little elevator over here, which has been totally reworked. You still tend to clip through the floor a little bit as it goes up and down but at least you don't fall through it like you were in Hangar Patch 11. There is the trainer version of the Aurora right there in front of us. We're not gonna go near that because it is not the one that we own. 
What we're going to do is we're going to hang a right over here and look, to, well, first we're going to look down and see what PBR does to the actual floor there. It shows wear and tear just like it would in a real hanger. Except I don't see any hydraulic fluid leaking, leaking on the ground like I did when I was in the Navy working on F-14s. So here we have the Aurora LX. A couple of things that I'm a little bit dis disturbed about, which I think are only because the lighting is not very well over here, is that the red color seems to be gone. And I'm sure it's not. I just think that the specular lighting or whatever lighting they're using is not letting us see the real colors of the ships right now. One of the reasons I bought this was for its trim. But I think this is going to be melted anyway. After playing the dogfighting module, I think a low-end exploration ves vessel like this is already replaced by the uh, 315P I own. And if I want to have an entry-level craft, I should have something that has a little bit more oomph in fighting. The Aurora that I fought with was pretty fun, but they had to overpower the weapons a little bit. And in doing so, um, I found that the LN is probably going to be a better Aurora. So in the beginning, I was going to melt the Aurora and turn it into LN and turn it into a Mustang. But now I think I'm going to melt the LX or buy the upgrade to the LX and you know, make that my two entry level ships, a Mustang, whatever version I choose, and the Aurora LN. This is by far my absolute favorite ship in the game for single seat fighting right now. And I don't know how it's going to act in the Arena Commander, but right now, as far as looks go, there isn't a ship in the game that I like as much as this. My runner up is the 300 series. And from what I'm seeing in the design phase, I think I'm going to like two other ships a lot. And one of them being the M50. And the other one being the Gladiator, if we ever get to it. Of course, the Gladius is something that got announced. I'm not sure what that's going to look like in the end. We're going around this front cannon of the Avenger. And PBR just made this thing look awesome. One of my disappointments was that they did not fix the, the decals on it. You know, they went out of their way to make it look good, but on one side you have the jet blast thing that we just saw right side up, and the other side it's upside down. I know that the ship is not done. It isn't done, guys, because the variants have not been released. But of course the first five being the Constellation, the Freelancer, the Aurora, the Hornet, and the 300 have to be worked on first. This is the F7CM. Again, lighting in this area is not very well, so it's hard to see how gorgeous this really does look. It's a wonderful ship. Beautiful. Trying to get in there and see the landing gear and lighting just is not working for us. And with the buggy out of action, I can't drive up to it and turn on the lights to get a better view. But believe me, as you walk around this ship, you actually do feel like you're standing in front of a real-life military jet. It's really nice. And of course, just like in real life, we have a Hornet, which is the one that we're using inside of the Arena Commander module. And we also have the F7CM, which is like the Super Hornet, the F-18 the F E and F. Here we have the LN, which sports the four um, weapon slots. The I think they're type 2 slots and you have the class 3 on top. One of the people out there said they tried to replace the class 3, I think it was from Beacon 147, with a weapon other than a missile. But if you have class 3s, only missiles could go on it. That's it. And if you're trying to put a cannon up there and it's going right through your ship, it's because it was never supposed to be there in the first place. Of course we're walking right past the two finalists in the next great starship contest because we've already talked about them. Here's the Cutlass, another one of the ships that's not one of the first five that's in our in our uh, spaceship hangars. It's really well done, but I can tell you this ship is going to receive a lot of work in the future. It is not done by any means. You're probably going to see a lot more detailing and another high-res pass on it. 
And then, of course, we're going to have some... Well, we have to have variants of this, right? Because there has to be a non-pirate version of it made somewhere. Somewhere in the world. They talk about this being a search and rescue vessel. And that might be... Well, that might be something to look forward to. This ship came within a few microns. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. The time, whatever the time is here. A few seconds of being melted. But I received, I, I think I knew it's from, and I thank you very much. But I received a gift, a freelancer, which I promptly melted and turned into a freelancer max. I was going to turn that into a freelancer max. The cutlass is not owned by me. It's owned by the enablers. This is a 315P. And I can tell you that once the lighting is updated on this, in this hangar, this ship is just going to be utterly gorgeous. It's another one of my favorite ships. It's a close second to the Avenger. And I got, I should say, I've made my purchase of the 315P because I want to do exploration in the game. I do want to dogfight, as you'll see with the video I release after this one. But the 315P offered me the opportunity to get a ship that was going to be able to go the distance be out there by myself without having to worry about crew and search for jump holes and other anomalies resources inside of the inside of asteroid fields and you know anything else i feel really weird about going around the constellation now if you look at sandy gardner's facebook page she's Put up some teaser photos of the inside. This ship is going to be next month's major sale. They have been working, pain, painstakingly working, on upgrading this ship, being Chris Roberts' favorite ships. Now, as far as multiplayer ships go, the Freelancer is my favorite, but this is by far my most prized possession. Um, this is going to be an incredible ship once it receives its upgrade. And we'll talk about that next month, but we already know that the cargo area is being moved to where the P-52 Merlin is. The Merlin will attach to the stern of the ship, the rear end, and there'll be an engine room back there and crew quarters in between the engine room and the front end. This is going to be an amazing looking ship in the end little bit of exterior differences and a major overhaul to the interior. The Constellation is going to be the ship that pretty much sets the standard for all other ships in the Star Citizen universe. At least you hope it does. Chris is going a long way to make sure that his baby is by far the best looking ship in the game. Okay, we looked at most of the ships that I had, so we're going to come up here to the MIS version of the Freelancer. This is a missile boat. If you've ever played X-Wing um, TIE Fighter, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, or X-Wing Alliance, there was a there was a Imperial version of a missile boat that was just amazing. It was based on a um, I forget the name of the shuttle, but it was based on one of the Star Wars Imperial shuttles. And it was kick butt, and that's what this is going to be. You get the same weaponry that you have on the outside. All the weapons that are on the wings. The two huge cannons, and if you watch the video, the, the uh, commercial, you see that they actually can... Well, they, they can articulate to where they swing out and can fire sideways, which was pretty cool. This is a typical freelancer hull with a few instruments in the front, sensors in the front. A limited edition model of the Freelancer built as a heaven, heavy weapon platform. The Freelancer MIS is ideal for independent security contractors as well as small local militia. Law enforcement or anyone who requires a formidable deterrent or some heavy duty backup. This MIS version trades in original Freelancer's massive cargo capacity for automated missile storage and reloading system, making the MIS capable of delivering a devastating and sustained deployment of ordnance. So this is going to have three crewmen. It's going to have an upgraded power plant, of course. It's also, all of the uh, freelancers have been upgraded with this airlock, right? And you go back here. This might be the weapons reloading station where the third crewman's going to have to be. I don't know because it's supposed to be automated. 
And let's look around. I mean, the detail in here is amazing. And again, it looks like a military vessel. Lighting needs to be upgraded as time goes on, but big deal. Things just look good. Up top, which we just caught a glimpse of, you're going to see where the missiles are actually going to be loaded, reloaded to. And most of this hold is going to be dedicated to the missiles, up to 50 that this ship could carry. Of course, that use button that came up is nothing but the back end. The tailgate, whatever you want to call it, the ramp, it still is the only articulating thing back here. You cannot get into the turret above as you can on the cutlass. I was looking for the little blue button. If I missed it, please somebody tell me. But ever since they've made this update to the freelancers tail ramp, I've been very happy with it. So let's go back through here. And the premise behind that airlock is you don't want to be spaced, right? You want to be able to dump your cargo if you can, and that's for the real freelancer. So you close the doors in between, and of course there's a docking collar up here. And then the crew compartment is separated by another section from the cargo compartment. So it seems like this is what you would do in real life, and I'm pretty impressed that they're going out of their way to make sure that this is in the game. I thought there was an airlock the whole time, but I watched somebody else's video saying that they added this. And if they did, that was an amazing upgrade. The science stations are no longer stowed like they were in version 11.1 .1 of the hangar. That's the one that gave us the new cockpit area. There is frosted glass so you can't see into the shower. I guess that's because you're going to be able to use it and you don't want to stare at someone taking a shower, but why would you take a shower in the game anyway? So science stations definitely are able to be stowed and, you know, broken down, you know, and opened up. You can't get into the bed jet or escape pods, whatever these may be. They're just not working. And there are four because crew are the people that maintain the ship, but you can have up to four. I like the way, or I should say I love the interior of the ship. That's what's making this my favorite. I think this is my favorite for the sheer fact that you can do two-person missions. And if you take more, that's great. But this is going to be a great ship. I did not include the DUR, the DUR, or the base freelancer in this review because essentially all three use the same frame. And there's only two main space frame differences, and that's the MAX and the MIS. If this was a DIRT, it would be a long-range exploration vessel. You'd have a lot more science uh, equipment inside of it and sensors and, you know, the things that could either plot the course through, record the course through, or um, search for jump holes and anomalies such as resources inside of asteroid fields. By far, this is my favorite multi-person ship at this point. In the future, for me taking up friends and organization mates, it's going to have to be a toss-up between the constellation and whatever they do, whatever beauty they bring to our retaliators. I seem to be an Aegis Dynamics person. I love the sleek lines of those ships. I don't dislike the Anvil, but Anvil, like the Hornet, I, I was starting to lose love for the Hornet until today, and after this video, I'm going to be releasing a video of making it all the way to level 12 on the uh, on the Arena Commander dogfighting module and the Vandal Swarm with the Hornet. And of course, you could probably do a lot better than I did with mouse and keyboard, but I'm using the X55, and I'm trying to learn how to fly with that. I think there's two entirely different control methods. Here we are outside, here we are inside. We're going to go through the views a couple of times in here because they definitely changed the way the views are. Makes it difficult. Oh, there's the max. Okay. Makes it difficult. I'm sure that everything's going to get rolled into one. They'll have separate key maps for in the uh, spaceships when they're flying and in the hangar when you're on the ships. Oh, here we are running over to the Freelancer Max. This is an upgraded space frame and the way that this one is listed is that if you're making so many runs that your regular freelancer just isn't cutting it 
you need to upgrade to the ultimate cargo hauling and that's the max it's the only way to describe this model it's not a name as <laughs> it's not a name ascribed lightly the freelancer max offers a wider body adding 50 percent more cargo capacity than the base model that's almost a quarter of the capacity of the max's big brother the starfarer which means more profit per run I think they could have said more there. Essentially, this is a upgraded ship with two extra engines. Um, the outside winglets are, look like they're almost armor to protect the weapons over there, but I don't know. Maybe they're giving additional lift? I don't know. This particular vessel is the base model's front end with a wider rear end and the twin engines and the engines of course are the arc corp arc duo 400 tr4s and those are pretty much the same across the whole line of freelancers that you could look at that's a beautiful front end of course lighting and other graphics glitches are happening right now over there in the corner you know standard factory maneuvering thrusters are the misc zytec tr2s now remember Sheehan technology and um, earth technology were used to make this vessel so there's a little bit of both it's unique that misc was one of those companies that actually got in with the Sheans. and if you've been reading the i guess the spectrum dispatches and they've had a couple of government uh, transcripts of letting the Sheans in to make uh I guess they're almost like service stations that would go around the Terran space or um, UEE space. So actually working with the Sheehan seems to be a uh, seems to be a little bit controversial in this universe. So we're going to walk all the way up front and look back. So this is the living quarters of the Freelancer. It's kind of tight, small. I was hoping that they would have expanded the front end of this too a little bit. If you're going to make a max a max, maybe give a little bit more living area. Maybe the captain a separate quarters, but that's okay. Here we are opening up the airlock door, and watch what happens when we open up the cargo hold door. Holy moly. That looks like a C-117 compared to a C-130. Huge huge cargo bay so the cargo capacity jumps up to 280 with a base freelancers cargo capacity is 168 so it's almost double the size of the cargo bay why it's not completely double is beyond me but this is uh, pretty awesome it won't be any problem getting your gray cat buggy and while well, there might be a big problem being that it's off on its own who knows if you leave the door open long enough maybe it will find its way in there let's just look at that let's pull back a little bit and just look at that tail end so it does suffer in you know having a few less weapons on the wingtip you still have the two let's see I'm just trying to see what kind of uh, weapons it has. It has the bearing V82 FL twin turret laser cannon still on the back. Of course, the waist are the four Kronig FL 33s. Um, there's one equipped on each side um, as a base, but you could have up to four. You have two class three three X uh, two bearing. A in other words, you have. Uh, Marksman 2 and Marksman 3 missiles on this thing on the wingtips. So you've got the waist cannons and you've got the wingtip mounts and you've got the standard turret firing backwards. So this is anything but a fighter aircraft. This is going to be dedicated to only being a freighter. Well, this is about all I have left to talk about. And as we fade off into the upper views of the ship, I just have a couple of more things to talk about. I did a full review of the Freelancer a few months ago, and that will be linked at the back end of this video right after the credits. That way you can go back and get a full, um, a full view into what the ship is about and what you'd expect from it. It's by far my favorite two-person ship in the 
game because it does give me that feeling that I might be flying the Serenity, although it is much smaller. So I hope you like this video and you continue to watch. Don't forget to like it if you do and give me some constructive uh, comments in the section below. Thank you very much. Y'all be safe out there and I'll be back soon. Ship is adrift. Four, 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 four.